You are watching Life on Gabriela TV, community television, for you, by you. Hi, I'm Elfie Arasandria. And I'm Frank Moore. And we're here to talk about a segment in our series on healthcare in the central Vancouver Island area. And in this case, uh, Althea has done the reporting on it. Um, it seems to me that uh, sometimes uh, when we talk about the healthcare situation, we forget about young people, people in say their late teens, 20s, 30s. So Althea, thanks for doing this story. You've talked to uh, four young people um, coming from different places. We'll talk about how that might have affected what they had to say. But in general, what did you find out doing this story? There's awful lot of similarities, a little bit of stories about the, the walk-in clinics and also the emergencies and also what their suggestions are to people that might want to get themselves checked. They're, they would, they would say that their stories might be different, maybe a different time and the way they all take place, but overall, it's kind of similar. <laughs> Are they having difficulties uh, accessing services, uh, health services? Mm, yeah, Mo most like most of them have a lot of the difficulty when it comes to accessing the services that even not one, but I think two of them mentioned to just try not to get sick in general. As the solution. Yes. <laughs> as, as the magic prescription. Mm -hmm. Um. Do you think they have the same concerns health-wise in terms of accessing medical care that older people do? Mm, maybe when it, in terms of um, the availability of help when it comes to the support and the staff, and uh, usually there are always super long queues in clinics or with the their limited availability on who can actually help or even the time it. It would usually take to look after or like check the patients because maybe they can wait in line for up to five hours but then the only time they could actually get to the doctor and all the consultation it all only takes about 10 minutes mm. and you know possibly they might even get referred to another place which might take hours again for the whole process to be complete and sometimes they might it might even make you wonder is it all really worth it okay yeah, which in turn is a health risk because people let things go that probably should be attended to. Now, you talked to four people. Where are they from, uh, respectively? Two of them are from Nanaimo. One lives in Gabriel Island, and the other one's currently in Kamloops, but used to live in the Vancouver Island area for several years. Right, so she sort of has a perspective from both places. Mm -hmm. Did where they live affect what their experience was? Maybe, yes, actually, because especially for one of them who lives in Gabriola uh, Island, he has to travel through with the ferry all the way to Nanaimo and then wait in line for the clinic and not sure, you know, if if he would actually get the, the service he would actually require. Right. Now, we're going to find out more about the individual details uh, from each of them directly in your interviews. But before we go to that, um, you're a young person. You're living in Nanaimo. Uh, what has been your experience of our healthcare system? So I am luckily one of the few people that rarely ever get sick. And I think the only time I would actually, like the only time I felt uh, the need to actually go to a clinic was the one time where I had uh, back pain. And it was unfortunately around the time where it, um, every every place, um, we're do we're, it was during a lockdown and access to clinics and everywhere are pretty limited. And I think it was also because of that, that um, I didn't get the help that I needed, or at least because the clinic didn't accept new patients they they only accept the people that have family doctors and they're limited in staff so i never actually got to experience the medical service um i just ended up treating everything myself 
Yeah, I think we find out that workers on the front lines of the healthcare system are just as frustrated as everybody else. In fact, at, at one point we were considering talking to some people at the uh, student clinic at VIU, the, the clinic for students there. But I went and looked at their page to get some contact info and it said, um, well, we're, we're having staffing challenges. We're no longer accepting new patients. So I think we can assume that they are running into the same difficulties that everybody else is, both patients and healthcare workers. So now let's find out about what uh, people had to tell you. Here's the story. So I'm Malisha. I'm originally from China, and right now I'm working full time in the Naimo. And how long have you been living here? Seven, seven years in February. Is it crazy? Um, I'm Natasha, and um, I'm a recent graduate from VIU. I've been living in BC for about four years now. I'm James Burrows. And I grew up on Gabriela Island since the uh, mid uh, '90s. Uh, my name's Erica, and I um, uh, was born in um, BC, in um, Grand Forks, British Columbia. And then I um, have been to school primarily uh, on the island, um, Victoria and Nanaimo, and uh, currently living and working in Kamloops, um, traditional territory of the Kamloops Shkwetmik. Uh, we went to Nanaimo uh, in 2016 and then would just um, uh, be there for school and then come back to Kamloops to do work, you know, live at home, save money on rent. Um, but primarily, uh, yeah, was there for school uh, between the years like 2016 to um, I guess like 2022 20, or so. So just before you moved to Kamloops, eh? Yeah, yeah. I haven't been back, like living there um, since moving back to Kamloops this latest time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what is your experience uh, in accessing medical services in your area? Uh, horrible. <laughs> or, like, because like I get it, like the medical system in Canada is different because like, free healthcare and all that stuff but it's just like I almost feel like I can't I cannot get sick because whenever you go to the hospital or like even the only walking clinic from um Parkswell to Nanaimo it's at least five hours wait and then you see the doctor for like 10 minutes and then they have to rush to the next ne next patient it's just like you just wait for five hours for 10 minutes um, I reached out a few different times to try to get some medical care and pretty much the only th time I could get help was if I went into a walk-in clinic in Vancouver when I was work working there. And the other times it was like, if you're not dying, they don't seem to care too much about getting oh. in right away. Or there's a huge waiting list for mental health issues and all these other things whenever i would try to go in um i would get written down a number or a call line and then it would just be like yeah you're on a waiting list of 40 plus people and your wait time is expected to be well over a year in terms of um walk-in clinics um they have been really hard to access um, if you don't get there before 7 a.m., you probably won't have a shot at getting a um, an appointment with to see a doctor for maybe five minutes. And you have access to walk-in clinics close to where you live now? Um, there is the walk-in clinic downtown Nanaimo, which is always very busy. Um, there's almost a huge lineup every time I walk by there. And... I've been in there twice and it was like, I was kind of there on a lucky day in between, like, you know, the lineup died down. I walked in and then 15 people walked up right behind me and they were in some serious need. So they got pushed up ahead, but um, yeah, you, you got to take a ferry to, to get uh, the kind of help you need on Gabriel when you're, in a place where you're even feeling vulnerable, you don't necessarily want to leave your home 
to start with, let alone take a ferry, wait in a different town for who knows how long, and then catch another ferry home. Do you think living on Gabriola makes it more difficult to access healthcare services? Uh, yeah, the last few years, definitely. But we do mm. have people coming, like there's nurses who come over, and I believe there's doctors and um, mobile dentists, which I think is really great and something that wasn't really going on as much as far as I'm aware. Um, so I, I think people are working on it, but it's kind of it seems to be a hard sell for a doctor to move to Gabriel and start up their practice. And have you had any experience in accessing medical services uh, while you were in Nanaimo? Yes, um, I have. Um, yeah, I think for the most part, it was typical. Um, primarily, it was accessing like mental health support and um, tried so like private uh, counselors or whatever. I did accompany someone who went to the emergency room. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, for like a dislocated shoulder and took a really long time to get him in. And then by that time, like they were able to see him. Then they had to like put him on or like to sedate him in order to put the shoulder back in when like the perspective was like, well, if you got him in like, quicker then you wouldn't have to be using um those like resources and like using that time to uh have to sedate him to like put it in um so there was kind of like a a conflict there in terms of like uh the effectiveness maybe of of that sort of care um but ultimately like i don't know he survives to live another day <laughs> he's fine <laughs> Mm -hmm. that like i heard usually it can take up two hours yeah is that what happened too yeah it was really long it was at like the nanaimo um which is general hospital um and it was like later in the evening that the dislocation happened and we were waiting around until like morning um and so they were like they just weren't able to like see him and like treat him because they were like conflicting, like he was being triaged, right? And like, so it was uncomfortable. They were like giving him morphine to like deal with the pain, but in terms of the actual treatment of like, hey, just pop it back in. And the quicker you pop it back in, um, the easier it'll be because if it's out for longer then like the muscle becomes like more stiff or like lack of an ability to pop it back in. And so, I mean, I see that like conflict of like, well, we need to treat these people because it's more of a um it's a more of like a pressing um issue uh, uh but it's kind of like well if you could it could just be like a one and done situation with like seeing him um but i can see how like there would be that conflict of triaging kind of conflict but yeah it was it was annoying um just kind of waiting around in the waiting room for so long and then, yeah, I think it was like maybe like three, four, five a.m. that all things were said and done. Mm -hmm. And have you been to an emergency in recent years? Uh, not not really. I remember last summer I actually sprained my ankle. That's the only time I was there. There for six hours, and then the doctors saw me for like maybe five minutes. He put some bandaid on me, just like, "Yep, yeah, go home and rest." And then he just pretty much saying, I don't have anything I can do. So, <laughs> uh, was it full? Um, were there many people in there at that time, or was it empty? It wasn't that full, but interestingly, the wait time was really long. In terms of going to the emergency, um, they, even though they are there for emergencies, their wait times are not, um, not less than about an hour. Mm. oh that can be annoying yeah mm. so it's not if you have an emergency you're still probably gonna have to wait for over an hour <laughs> have you been to an emergency in recent years um i haven't myself uh in the recent years um but uh my my grandpa has been in and out of the hospital recently and the first time we went in, it was like 
very quick. They within an hour everything was sorted, and then the second time I went in, we we're waiting for like almost five hours just for someone to be able to see us. I, I'm so grateful for all the workers and the staff and everyone. There's even volunteers down at the hospital who are doing their best to make people comfortable. And uh, you know, I I hope uh, something can become a bit more positive in the system, but uh, it seems like there's a lot of a lot of help that's needed that uh, is kind of overwhelming their system. Have you been referred to another location maybe, or would you just say that you can only rely on that one place that you visited? Because I know there it, there is like a quote unquote um, like hospital or clinic in Littlesmith. And in fact, last time my boyfriend, he was, I think he stabbed his finger or something. We were there five or six, not even it wasn't six, like 530. We, we got there. They were like, yeah, we're closed and there's no doctors. Hmm. So basically we were, you know, basically being sent to another location, but just they had like no doctors. So we went to the, we ended up going to the hospital for another waited for five hours. Does it concern you that you don't have a regular doctor in the meantime? Um, yeah, it, it's a bit stressful when you have to talk to someone who doesn't know your history. Like every time I see a doctor, they go, you don't have a family doctor. Where, who's your family doctor? So, and you're not sure how long the wait is liable to be. Yeah, still going, I guess. And while you were on the island, did you ever have a family doctor? Mm -hmm not on the island. I have a family doctor in Kamloops here um, mm -hmm. that I would see here and there when I um, would be back in town. And they have since retired and passed both their their patients and their husband's patients over to one individual. So I can only imagine what that's going to be like. I haven't connected with him yet, uh, but I still technically have a family doctor. Mm -hmm. I, which is, I mean, a privilege in and of itself. Some people just don't. Um, so it was like carryover from when I was a a kid, I suppose. Um, yeah. How long did it take to go from one family doctor to the other? Like, is the is the process kind of uh, quite instant? Or I think it was fairly instant. It was just purely like, hey, here are the people. Um, you get these people, and then I haven't like had to navigate what that's like, um, like seeing that doctor now, I haven't done that yet, but I imagine um, there will be some, uh, there'll, there'll be some like process involved in, in terms of like, I just, I think getting to know that doctor. Um, so yeah, I'm not, not sure. Do you have access to a family doctor? Yeah, yes. Luckily, I, I have. Yeah, luckily, I have. Yeah. And how long did it take for you to get to find one? I have. I don't remember. It was a year and a half or two years because I was on the uh, wait list for the uh, family doctor registry through the. Uh, I think it was the province BC or something. A year and a half or two two years. It's crazy. Just to wait have wait to have a family doctor. <laughs> And do you have access to a family doctor? I actually have not been able to get uh, a family doctor yet. Um, I did recently take a picture of one of the posters at um, the hospital. Um, my partner needed to go get some tests done and um, we were just trying to find ways uh, he could get that test done. So we were at the hospital and I saw multiple posters about getting a family doctor. So I took a picture of it. Um, but I think the most useful um, way to get any information on um, medical, like anything medical, um, is probably through the apps. I've seen and heard a lot of people using the TELUS app. And I think that even they now have um, some amount of a wait time, but I think it's comparatively better to um, use some of the apps. So when I was sick earlier, um, I couldn't get out of bed and I knew that there was no way I could reach um, the clinic, the walk-in clinic at least. 
and get an appointment the same day because there was no way that I was um, waiting in line from about 7 a.m. until um, maybe 8 a.m. when they open. So um, if I had known about the app back then, I probably would have used it as an easier way to get um, some sort of medical advice uh, from the comforts of my home. And have you ever tried to use those kind of like apps that can help you? Have you ever experienced yeah. that? Yes, I have. Um, I have for a couple times now. It, what was hard, what's hard is that they keep kind of changing and one I was having trouble with TELUS Health because like it didn't really coincide with my provider from work. So that made things a little bit annoying. I ended up using this one called like Maple that I had to pay a fee to use. Um, I think it was like 60 bucks or something. Um, but it was like kind of my only option because I was on a work trip at, in Victoria. And I basically thought that I had strep throat. And so really wanted um, to get that treated. Um, so I ended up going through um, this online version. Like the doctor, I've had some ex experiences where like the doctor FaceTimes me and is like quite receptive to like what I believe things are. Um, this doctor was only like texting me, which made it a little bit tough and was like, take a picture of your throat for me. And I was like, well, I don't know. I don't have the best camera to be able to like show you, but okay. And he ended up kind of like diagnosing me with something that and like gave me a prescription for basically just like a mouthwash that like did nothing. Um, probably didn't have strep in the end because like it went away and I'm okay now. But like I found that to be kind of a frustrating interaction because we're like supposed to have like accessible free healthcare in Canada. And like I had to pay this $60 fee for something that ended up being really not like a standard of care that I was pleased with. I think sometimes you need to be seen and an app like can't provide that degree of care. Um, but like I've had good experiences if you have like a UTI or something where it's really uncomfortable to be out uh, like waiting around, but it's also like, hey, I know what I need and so do they for the most part. Um, using an app for that can be super helpful so that you're not in a waiting room feeling incredibly uncomfortable. Um, so I try and go the app route that way. I just would need to like, do research on like what kind of app is the best and, and, and already kind of having your ducks in a row there. So you're not like frantically trying to find something and then going with Maple who charges you $60 um, when that is not how our healthcare is supposed to be set up. <laughs> it's kind of supposed to be free. Um, yeah. And you were a student at VIU? I was, I was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, the clinic they had there is just a all, also like it's like I don't know like at least a week of like you have to book appointment a week ahead so you can get in. <laughs> and you've ever tried to access their clinic? Yes, I went. I went there once, um, but uh, it's it for like a really specifically not really medically related problem, and then. Mm -hmm they couldn't figure out what was going on. So I ended up seeing a um, physiotherapist for like two times and then my physiotherapist ended up fixing my problem. So, and then I went back to that clinic, the clinic again. <laughs> and uh, as a former university student, have you ever accessed the health and wellness center or other services like on campus? Um, so the health and wellness center, um, I did try and book an appointment with them a while ago and um again there's always going to be a wait time there's always going to be a line um some usually at the at the university um some of the wait times are even about um maybe a month or maybe four months it's it's pretty crazy um so in terms of emergency they're they're pretty unreliable um, I wish they could find ways to make that better. Um, yeah, probably increasing the the amount of time that they're open would make that a little easier to do, but yeah. <laughs> and do you think that it might have something to do with the people that are there, like the availability 
how many people are available each day or do you think it's it has other um, it's influenced by other factors I most definitely think that it is influenced by um, how many people are available during a day and how long they are available for. Uh, because say, for example, at the walk-in clinic, um, I know that they only accept uh, appointments until a certain time during the day. And then they kind of block off half the day um, and not take any appointments during that time. So I guess even if um, the appointments kind of go by really quick and um, sorry, the if, if all of the appointments that were taken in the morning have now finished, people wouldn't even know that there is an opening or if there was a cancellation, people wouldn't know unless there was some way that other people could find out but once they've kind of gone through that list, they're, I guess their only option is to wait until the second round of appointments come through, which is probably late in the evening. And not a lot of people um, go around to the walk-in clinic during that time. Mm. Oh, yeah. That, not sure why they have it like that. <laughs> yeah. I wish there were like, more clear instructions on certain processes or um or even like um a way to book an appointment at a certain clinic um online mm. it's also like takes two to tango like it's not just the it's not just the uh, like the medical involvement and like that kind of care it's also like what's expected from the university and um, so those hoops, as we all know, university has many hoops, um, yeah, which can be difficult to navigate when you are doing either poorly physically or psychologically, for sure. Mm -hmm. Compared to where you're at now and versus when you were still on the island, did you find any differences between the healthcare system? Um, I think I've act accessed it very differently like I think it depends on that stage of your life like when you're in your 20s your or like your early 20s I feel like in your 20s it's such a range of how you're you know what you're needing to access how you're doing like so I'm in my late 20s now and um so the services that I've accessed have been different than what I was maybe accessing like in my early 20s I would say that like recent services that I've that I've accessed and it would be in Kamloops though um, have been quite positive uh, through a clinic um, in it's not like a walk-in clinic and that you, like you you have to make an appointment um, but it's a it's a clinic in that you don't need to be like a um, it's not like they like, well, we, we don't have space to have you as a patient. It's like, you know, come one, come all. You just have to make an appointment. And the access was pretty quick. Um, I ended up just being able to be put on a wait list. And then when the wait list, like the wait list in terms of like when something pops up any earlier, and obviously there's going to be cancellation. So someone canceled and I was able to get in like a few days after making the appointment, which was really great. And then it was a very smooth uh, process. And I was really pleased with uh, that degree of care. So uh, people can like, if they don't have family doctors, I believe they can see, they can like get in at the clinic, which uh, yeah, was really positive for me. And so the question is kind of like, do you need to have like a family doctor all the time? I don't know. If they're not available or like, yeah, the, yeah like this seemed like a nice workaround. Like, would you consider that the clinic in Vancouver is way more ahead compared to the one in Naimo? Uh, it seemed to be about the same, like big, quick, long building up lineups. And then it's like, if they can deal with it right there, then they're writing down a prescription or a referral to someone else. And then you're into the next phase of the system where you're either kind of getting lost in paperwork or people just aren't calling you back or you're just waiting for weeks and weeks and then people go into alternative ideas of you know dr google and 
looking up things on WebMD and getting even more worked up. Um, do you have any uh, like steps or approach you would recommend to others when they need to get themselves checked? Um, yeah, what are your experience? Um, so most definitely go to the walk-in clinic and stand in line way before um, they open. So probably the one downtown um, opens at around eight. So uh, whenever I've uh, needed to go to the walk-in clinic, I usually go around 7 a.m. and stand in line. Uh, usually try and get to be one of the first few people to, um, to get to the front desk. And so um, there won't be that much of a wait time. And um, for university students, um, I know that um, Guard Me is the social, uh, the, sorry, not social, um, the medical insurance plan that they are on, which does not, it is not applicable at um, walk-in clinics. Only maybe a few options would have, um, they would have access to, but um, they usually don't um, kind of waiver the the payment right there. You're going to have to pay and then take that receipt and then send it to Guard Me, which is a whole um, other process. So I think it'd be um, a good idea to keep that in mind um, when going to a walk-in clinic. Mm. And how long does that process usually take? It could be weeks or even um, some months. I... It, it really depends. <laughs> uh, you, I think you would have to wait. Uh, you would have to send guard me uh, a copy of the receipt. And then um, somebody will get back to you and ask you for some more information um, regarding um, like some personal information in order to um, pay for the insurance and you get your money back. But um, the last time I tried it, it was really weird and I didn't know how to get it to work. So I don't think I got any of that money back. And out of, you know, out of everything, the walk-in clinics, the hospital, like those apps, what would you recommend to someone who needs to get themselves checked? I would recommend like walk-in clinics, make note that I'm, I'm doing this, um, where you make an appointment um, and you if it's like okay we have an availability in like two weeks time be like can I get on a cancellation list and someone's bound to cancel and um getting in through that means so that you're not having to like wait in an uncomfortable waiting room for who knows how long um pay a silly fee like the online uh app uh situation that sometimes happens with those apps um because it can also be like really difficult and kind of like inaccessible for some folks too. Um, if they maybe don't have that like digital literacy, there can be some, um, but like being able to talk on the phone to a human, book an appointment, get on a cancellation list if you need to be earlier. Like I found that to be very useful. And also the people there being like really professional. And I think them also having those, having it be appointment based allows them to like, uh, tend to the patients more effectively because they're like not worked off their feet. I mean, they're obviously still really busy, but you're not just like dealing with any old Joe who comes in um, and is demanding uh, care. So I would recommend that one. There are some, like there are, I think one or two in Kamloops. So I would imagine just given like the size of Nanaimo, there's probably one or two like that um, there as well. Um, it's a good alternative to a walk-in, uh, but also a good alternative to, I think, like a family doc because it's just hard to get one. Would you recommend other people to go to walk-in clinics when they need to get themselves checked? No. <laughs> Stay at home. You'll be fine. <laughs> don't go to walk-in clinic. Don't go to the hospital because, like, if you don't want to wait for, like, well, to be here fair, like the hospital is five to six, six hours too. But even the uh, walking clinic is like, as soon as, we, as you get there, they were saying like, no, we're, we're close. We're not taking patients for today because they were all capacity. So either stay at home or go to the hospital. <laughs> That's our two options. I guess people like who doesn't have a family doctor, just like you have the almost have this, I cannot get sick mentality. 
<laughs> I guess don't get sick. <laughs> but um, no, on a, on a serious note, um, I guess, I think the best thing to do is try and get ahead of everybody. So even even if that means going and standing in line early in the morning, if you are not able to and you have somebody who you can trust and uh, rely on, um, it would be greatly appreciated. And if, for the person that isn't well, if that person could even go stand in line for them and then you know, meet them afterwards. I think that's, that's how things used to work back home is if there was a big line, if one person could go and stand there, then I guess you're, you're at least you're set in line to um, um, be there for an appointment. So what would you recommend to someone who needs to get themselves checked? Um, yeah, try to get there as early as you can and uh, expect to wait and uh try to try to try to stay positive through the whole thing i know it's never really fun going into uh, a hospital or emergency room or doctor's visit you can have a lot of anxiety just convincing yourself to go um i'm from a family that's like just tough it out you know it, it's fine you don't gotta see a doctor but uh, there's times when you should not tough it out and you should go see a doctor. You know, if you have appendicitis pain or your appendix is bursting, you should go see the doctor. If you had the opportunity to bring change or improvement to the medical service, what suggestions or input you'd like to share? Uh, I don't, I just kind of feel like, I, I get it, like you, you go to the medical school for five, six years and then it's also so super difficult to become a nurse. But maybe just, Honestly, I feel like Nanaimo, especially in Nanaimo as a small community, needs more funding for hospitals and they need more funding for, uh, you know, training for the nurses and the doctors instead of like building bike wings. That's my opinion. So <laughs> probably try and find <laughs> more um, availability for just to like give students um and other people opportunities to be able to have access to um, any medical service in Canada or BC. And um, probably just putting more information out there, more information on how to do things and the procedures of how to do things, even if it's just one website that people can rely on, just have one platform that everybody can have access to, um, or or a phone call, um, a phone number that people can use to ask questions about such things. So if you had the opportunity to bring change or improvement to the medical service, what suggestions or inputs you'd like to share? Um. Give uh, better support and schedules to the nursing staff. And I'm assuming the rest of the staff also has crazy schedules, but like the, the shift work, my aunt in Australia, uh, she's been a nurse for a long time. And when I was a kid, she was telling me about the insane conditions of working crazy long hours you can't even have a bathroom break because your patient might die or go into shock or other things that are ha happening. And she's telling me all these, you know, horror stories. And then I had a friend who went through the nursing program and he just graduated uh, at the beginning of the pandemic. So 2020, he, he's ready to be a nurse. And then they're telling him about all of the conditions that he'll be working in. And it was like verbatim, almost the exact same thing and that's like over 15 years of the nursing kind of shift work not changing for the better it says yeah you work crazy hours you're working all this stuff you got sometimes you know too many patients working and you have you have to be there because these people are relying on you and then you're sleep deprived because you're working a night shift and then you have a few days off and then you're working a morning shift and that's really not good for people's mental health. You know, like you need to have good sleep and a normal schedule. Like there are people who are nighttime people and who 
prefer to be working at night. And I know it's not everyone, but I'm, I think that maybe just finding more people who are able to just do night shifts or some form of a schedule that's a few alterations that could maybe help people's, you know, sleep patterns get better. And I think just more support and uh, more pay probably as well, I think would be a bit more helpful for uh, all these people working so hard to keep everyone uh, alive and hopefully healthy. Mm -hmm. And if you had an opportunity to bring change or improvement to the medical service, what suggestions would you like to share? My suggestion, and this is a bigger, like a bigger situation. Oh, shit, I have to go. But um, uh, is making the healthcare industry more accessible for folks like you and I uh, to be able to work in um, and provide care to. Uh, I think there's a lot of gatekeeping when it comes to uh, doctors. And um, I don't think that that is, you know, you know, you need smart capable people, but there are a lot of smart, capable people who um, don't need to have that like elitist mentality in order or like be, I don't know, like, and like also like have good bedside manner. Like I think that, that if the doors were more open and accessible to a lot of willing folks, then we would have more doctors out there and there would be, um, we'd be less of a, like a healthcare crisis. Um, but that's on like I think the doctors union and like universities and all that stuff who I believe are um, uh, keeping those doors closed so that their um, wages can be high, which just doesn't really serve anyone in this society. So um, yeah, that's my thought. 